a more fundamental question completely avoided by the federal government is, are there actually any benefits associated with CO2 emissions? Well, a model often employed by the EPA actually includes these benefits in its calculations. In fact, under very, some, under very reasonable assumptions, there are substantial probabilities of negative SCC, or in layman's terms, actual benefits, in some cases as high as two-thirds, resulting from greater CO2 prevalence allowing increased agriculture and forestry yields. This negative SCC estimate would signify that CO2 emissions are not a cost, but a benefit to society. Now, I, of course, don't take the position that CO2 emissions are either an overall positive or negative externality, but the sheer fact that the model can indicate either under very reasonable assumptions speaks volumes about how prone it is to user manipulation, which is precisely what government bureaucrats have been able to do in the past. So the bottom line is regulations aimed at decarbonization are predicated on models that have been manipulated to justify a particular regulatory agenda. I know that there are um, a couple of different ways of calculating social costs of carbon, and I, I wondered if you'd elaborate on that and perhaps uh, how easily they can be manipulated. There are indeed a variety of ways to calculate the social cost of carbon. So there are three main statistical models, as I alluded to in my testimony, that the federal government had used. The DICE model, the FUN model, and the PAGE model. Uh, the, we took the DICE and FUN models in-house. The PAGE model we did not take in-house because the author, Chris Hope, specifically insisted on co-authorship in exchange for giving us his code. So we felt it precluded us from being able to do any independent analysis. So we took the DICE and FUN models and we played with the assumptions. And what we noticed is that these models are very, very sensitive to extremely reasonable changes in assumptions. For example, these models foolishly make projections 300 years into the future. We have no idea what the American economy will look like 300 years from now. It's like saying that George Washington would know, would know what the American economy would look like today. And these models foolishly make these projections. If you cut the time horizon back to still unrealistic, but more realistic, 150 years, you get a drastically lower estimate of the SEC, around 20% lower. If you change the discount rate, specification of a discount rate, in fact, the, the Obama administration's interagency working group specifically ignored advice from the OMB to include a 7% discount rate, you not only reduce the social cost of carbon, under some very reasonable assumptions, the social cost of carbon can even be negative. Um, and that, in, when the social cost of carbon is negative, then that signifies that the benefits exceed the cost, and CO2 is an overall positive externality. And lastly, the climate sensitivity distribution. Uh, quite frankly, the previous administration had beefed up the climate sensitivity assumptions in the, in the uh, use in calculating social cost of carbon to beef up the SEC as high as it could. And when you use more realistic climate sensitivity assumptions, uh, you can also get a drastically different and lower estimate, potentially even negative estimate of the SEC. And even under, and again, under some very reasonable assumptions, it can be negative.